Hey folks, I'm Terrapin, and I'm going to be playing Evil Hack today. Um, as you can see, uh, Terminal looks different from um, how I was playing last time. I've decided to play with curses, uh, so hopefully it'll be a little easier to see what's happening this time around. Um, also, I've been spending the last couple games uh, trying to figure out my recording um, and making sure that it doesn't freeze up like it did last time. So hopefully it should be working much better this time around. Um, in that, um, with that said, I'm going to start playing and I'm going to pick, um, a specific character this time, a turtle archeologist. Um, oop. I always forget with curses when you press space, it doesn't pick a random selection like TTY does. It just exits the thing. So redo. Um, archaeologist, turtle, random, and let's go lawful, because I think it's fun. Um, alrighty. So, um, let's see. Oops, wrong letter. Um, so, okay, so turtle archaeologist, um, it's I think a very interesting uh, character to play. Um, I was playing them primarily because I knew they'd suck. Um, and when I was trying to figure out my recording, I didn't want to play long games. And that did not work out so well. Oh, my kitten fell in a pit. Let me see if I can take it out. My cat is not having it. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, so. Uh, I chose it primarily because I figured I wouldn't be able to survive long as a turtle archaeologist while I was figuring out my recording stuff. Um, and then, of course, last game, I made it all the way to Astral, and then I died. Uh, so this time it's personal. I'm going to win <laughs> with this character one way or another. Um, anyway, uh, so archaeologists are pretty much how they are in vanilla. Um, they still have both speed and stealth, which I hear is no longer the case in 3.7. Um, but yeah, they get speed and stealth from level 1, so that's cool. Um, Tortles are an evil hack race, um, and they are... they're a real treat. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hit on them a lot, and I'm just gonna preface all of that by saying I think they're a really interesting race, which is the most important thing. Um, so when I say they suck, I mean that entirely from a they're not easy sense. Um, they're not what you want to choose if you want to win the game. Um, but I think they're a lot of fun. So, yeah. Okay. So with that said, they're basically like giants, but, th but they're worse. Um, you can see I'm wearing a fedora and a pair of leather gloves. Um, that is pretty much all the armor I'm going to be wearing. <laughs> I mean, obviously not those two specific things exactly, but uh, turtles can only wear soft hats and soft gloves. Um, and of course they can wear shields, but then they can't be wielding two weapons. So, um, yeah, you generally are going to be wanting to dual wield instead of wearing a shield. Um, they are slow like giants. Um, so they have a speed of 10, and this means that uh, any uh, speed 12 enemy can get two moves on you pretty much at any time. Um, archaeologists start with speed, which means that on average they have a speed of uh, 14, which is, you know, decently fast. But because speed is, um, like, it adds, so speed adds 12 movement points on one third of turns. So you get like an extra move on one third of turns. But that means that on two thirds of turns, you're only getting 10 movement points, which means speed 12 enemies can still double move you then. Um, there's a vault on this level, so I'm going to be searching for it. Uh, I heard the, the sound of somebody, like a vault guard patrolling or something before. So um, yeah, I'm going to look for it. So. Um, Where was I? Right, so speed 12 enemies can still double move you on a good amount of times. For instance, the Goblin King can double move 
take to get two moves on me. Um, so that makes it a very the Goblin King a very scary enemy to face unless I have like a an attack wand or just a massive stack of daggers or something. Um, um, what else? So turtles they can only wear uh, soft hats and gloves. They do get a very large amount of AC um, just naturally. So they start with negative 10, I believe. So if I take off my uh, fedora and my leather gloves, I'm at zero AC um, because I start with negative 10, or with, you know, however you say that, 10 points of armor um, from my shell. It's flavored because um, I'm basically a humanoid turtle. Um, so that's something, and you get another point of AC for every three levels. So at level 30, you get 20 points of AC just from just from being a turtle. Um, I think that still probably doesn't measure up favorably favorably to getting to wearing like a dragon skin t-shirt, cloak, scaled armor, and you know dragon skin boots. Um, but you know it's something. Um, this is probably teleport because I found it in what is basically a closet, except the corridor happens to go past it. Um, surprising that there's two of them, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's teleport. Um, all right, actually, I'm going to just pick this up so I know where it is. Um, one thing I'm going to try to do this game is... Even with stuff that I can't wear, like magical boots and stuff, I'm going to try to keep track of where it is. Because if I get like a humanoid pet who could use it, then that would be nice. Um, like to give him speed boots or something. And or if I decide that being a turtle is just too unbearable and I'd rather be in a polyform. Which I'm currently not planning to do, but I'm also not totally against the possibility. Uh, I will have armor for, to, you know, if I decide to go mastermind flayer or something that can wear a lot of armor. Um, <clears throat> so what else do turtles do? Uh, they don't have infravision. Um, giants do, but turtles don't. Just another way in which they're inferior. <laughs> um, they uh, they can't uh, go through cor tight corners, much like giants, because their shell is too bulky, even though they're medium-sized otherwise, so they can be engulfed. Um, they have swimming from level 1, which means they can breathe underwater, um, but they don't have magical breathing, so they can still get suffocated by gelatinous cubes, for instance, which are particularly scary for turtles, because they're slow, but and they can get engulfed, um, unlike giants, which are slow but can't get engulfed because they're huge. Um, so... Uh, looks like elves don't particularly like us, slash my charisma is just really bad. Um, but yeah, speaking of stats, what do we have? So our strength is high, you can see. Um, turtles also have a slightly increased strength cap. Um, get, can get up to 19, which is cool. Uh, especially because I can't wear gauntlets of power, except... Um, the gauntlets of purity are a forged artifact that turtles can wear, even though they're made of silver. Um, so it's either that or the hand of Vecna, which is another artifact. Um, those both can't grant 25 strength, but other than that, I can't get to it. And because I can only... Be, okay, so just moving on to the rest of the stats first. Dexterity is terrible, and always will be. I think it might be worse than giants. I'm not sure about that. Um, constitution and intelligence are normal, wisdom is a little high, and charisma is bad. Um, and in terms of my starting stats, my wisdom is high, which means I'll have a good amount of power off the bat. But my intelligence is kind of low, which means it'll be harder for me to learn spells to actually use that power. Um, yeah, I'd say that archaeologists make decently good spellcasters. Um, and turtles can't wear robes or any th or helms of brilliance or anything that could boost their spellcasting success rates. But they also can't wear any armor that would hurt their spellcasting success rates, except shields, which, as I said before, is not generally not something I like to do anyway. Um, what is 119? Is it 89 times 4 thirds? Yes, it is. Okay. 
Um, oops. Um, where were they? So, uh, oh, we've got a holy or unholy water potion. Let me see if my pet picks it up, because then it'll be holy water and that'll be useful. Um, so back to the strength for a second. Um, archaeologists can only get to basic and two weaponing. And in um, in Evil Hack, uh, what weapons you can offhand depend on your two weapon skill. So if you're restricted or unskilled in two weaponing, you can't wield anything more than um, 20 AUM in your offhand without incurring, I think, like a negative 30 or something massive um, to hit penalty. Basically, it's not worth it ever. Um, and at basic, which is the highest I can get it, um, you can't wield anything more than 30 AUM in your offhand. Um, so that could be a spear, a short sword, a saber. Um, and so you might think, okay, I can wield a saber in my offhand. That's all you'll ever need. Just, you know, wield the silver saber. Um, the problem is that uh, silver is heavier than iron. So a silver saber or a silver short sword or a silver spear, um, or yeah, um, they're all going to be like 33 AUM, I think, something like that. They're going to be a little bit heavier than 30 AUM, which means I can't wield them in my offhand. Um, I do have some options nonetheless. I can um, go with, where did the 300 potion, there we are. I'm going to see if my cat picks this one up too. Um, I can go with a silver uh, javelin, which is like a spear, but a little bit lighter and does very slightly less damage. Um, that's a decent option. Um, archaeologists can get to expert in spears because their quest artifact has become a spear. Um, so that's a possibility. I can also use a silver trident, which I think is a, probably the best option. Um, they, uh, they do have, I think, they, they do really high damage for one-handed weapons. Um, possibly the most damage. I'm unwilling to bet on that though. Um, and even though I don't believe archaeologists normally get any skill in trident, turtles get like one level more than they otherwise would have. Um, so if a role would be restricted in trident, a turtle playing that role would get it can get to basic in it, um, which means that I could use it uh, while two weaponing, and that would be decent. Um, Either way, uh, so th yeah, I think that's one of the ways in which turtles are interesting, and turtle archaeologists in particular, is like, there's all these restrictions about what they can do, but then there's also ways in which you can get around these restrictions, and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so we've got ourselves some zombies. Actually, I probably just shouldn't fight them. Okay, I'm leaving. Bye. Um, zombies are just another thing that turtles are really bad with which is basically most things, but still. Uh, zombies are particularly scary because um, um, so turtles are slow, which means zombies can hit them more. And they can only wear soft hats, which provide less protection against zombie bites. So um, yeah, you get your brain eaten a lot. Uh, I have no idea where my pet is. Oh, and goblin found somewhere on this level too. But I really don't want to stick around with zombies, so I'm just going to leave. Um, and I've notated, annotated the Goblin Town was on that level for the future. Um, we'll see what happens. Oh, and noises in the distance. So either someone's grudged someone else, or maybe my pet like fell down a trapdoor or something. Um, I can't remember now. Did the chest on the first floor, was that locked? Playing and talking at the same time has me quite scatterbrained. Oh, this is a were rat. Whoops. Gotta be careful then. I mean, I still gotta kill it. It's faster than me, so I don't really have another option. But I'm gonna kill it carefully now. Okay, that was easy. Um, 
Yeah, so in terms of ranged options, archaeologists in general, like a solid choice, right, would be. Um, I'm going to turn this because I think it provides poison resistance, but it also makes me hallucinate when I eat it. So I'm not going to eat it right away. I'll wait until I have like a unicorn horn or something. Um, just like in 3.7, sat drain is not solved by unicorn, so I couldn't just. So getting a unicorn horn doesn't mean I can just eat poisonous corpses with impunity, but it does mean I can eat tinned yellow mold corpses with impunity. Oh shit, zombie again. Should not have gone next to it. Um, okay, anyway, where was I? Right, so in terms of ranged options, the like classic um, archaeologist ranged weapon is the boomerang, right? They can get the expert in it, you know. Um, it's on brand, etc. Uh, I, I mean, I don't play that many archaeologists, but personally, I'm not sure I'd use it anyway because its flight pattern is so weird. It sounds like it would be a real pain to use. Um, hope there's another vault on this level. Oh, and level one doesn't have a vault anymore, so I should probably do something about that. Whatever. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to kick these trees in hopes that I get some eucalyptus thingies. Um, and I'm hungry again. That's another thing about turtles, because they're slow, it feels like they hunger quickly, because you're getting less moves per turn. Um, but they aren't actually hungrier than other races. Um, I guess I should be careful of killer bees too. I think it's worth the risk though. And I can always teleport away because I've got the scrolls. Um, okay. Yes, Eucalyptus leaves. That's a score. Okay, I'm not going to kick the last tree because I might hurt myself again or summon some killer bees, and it's not worth the risk now that I have some perfectly good eucalyptus leaves on me. Um, alrighty. So, back to boomerangs. We're getting there. Um, on top of all the reasons why you might not want to use them anyway, because they're a pain and so on. Uh, for turtles in particular, they're an awful idea. Uh, the reason for that is... Um, the way boomerang multi-shot works is you only ever need one boomerang to multi-shot. Um, which is good because, let's face it, you're only ever going to find one boomerang. Um, and unlike most other weapons in Evil Hack, you can't forge them either. So um, we're stuck with finding whatever you can get. Maybe wishing for one if you're really crazy. Uh, but the point is, um, you only ever need one, and then if the area is such that it can loop around back to you, you have a chance of catching it and throwing it again. Aha! Co-aligned Altar. This is great. Um, lots of uncursed stuff. Also cool. I can actually wear this armor. I don't know why I picked up the skull cap. I'm never going to need that. Um, silver banded mail. Like I can't remember the forging recipes. It might be that you could use one to forge a silver barden, barding, which would be pretty nice because it would sear creatures that tried to attack whoever was wearing the barding. Um, so I'm kind of keeping it around for that reason. Plus I could sell it at a store for a decent amount of money. Uh, but I'm going to drop it here for now because it is really heavy. Anyway, um, so you have a chance of catching a boomerang and throwing it again, but it's based on dexterity. And my dexterity maxes at 10. 15 if you wear gauntlets of dexterity, which isn't a terrible choice as a turtle because you can't wear gauntlets of power. But gauntlets of protection are probably the better choice because uh, um, you can't get MC3 any other way. You can't really get MC2. Like I think it might... Yeah, it's very difficult to get MC2 even. Um, you'd need to be wearing... 
What even grants MC1? I guess you could get Intrinsic Protection and then augment it with a Ring of Protection, maybe? I don't know if Intrinsic Protection's MC1 gets augmented by Ring of Protection, even. Anyway, um, I will leave that as an exercise to the reader. Uh, point is, oh, I should have sacrificed that corpse. What was I thinking? Actually, maybe, I don't know. Um, last game, I sacrificed a lot in early stages of the game, and I got like a dozen non-artifact gifts, and that made it really hard to get artifact gifts later, because they all count as gifts, and so they all decrease your chances of getting other gifts. Um, still, I'm greedy. I'm going to see if I can... These rows will leave corpses because they're large, so they always leave corpses. Yeah. Um, going to somewhat low-key run away from them and also leave them to the altar at the same time. Um, if I'm still at low health, then I will uh, use the turtle's super special ability. Um, oh shoot, we're rat. That's not great. Hmm. Um... Well, it seems to be just leaving me alone, which is odd, but I'm not complaining. Okay, yep. Um, so, turtles have a ability they can use with hashtag monster. Um, they retreat into their shells. Um, and this gives them 40 AC, I guess. Um, it gives them 40 AC, half physical damage, um, and it also protects you from certain attacks, like stings um, bites from creatures that are small enough, uh, other things. Point is, um, at least in the early game, it's very difficult for anything to damage you. Late game, it's much easier because a lot of creatures cast spells or do elemental damage, which, yeah, um, is worse. Uh, while you're in your shell, you literally can't do anything except wait and pray, and shit, it just summoned help. So I'm kind of screwed. Um, I was hoping that the second creature that came up was the other Wroth, but it looks like the were rat has come and summoned, um, summoned some more rats. So I'm definitely teleporting out of this once I get out of my shell. But for now, I'm just hanging out because nothing is hitting me. So I might as well heal some. Um, I can stay in here for like 100 turns or so. And while I'm in my shell, I have slightly increased regeneration. It's like, I think on a fifth of the turns, I wouldn't otherwise get a, any health. I get a point of health, so it's like a fifth as good as actual regeneration. Um, bright side, there is just an absolutely massive amount of rats for me to sacrifice if and when I get out of this mess. See, I'm just, I keep getting the you feel hummed in messages, so just more and more rats keep getting summoned. Um, I choose to see this as me farming um, for sacrifices and not as me totally screwing up, uh, which when it actually is, you decide. But either way, I'm going to, when, when I unshell, I'm going to immediately take out a scroll of teleportation and read it. So it doesn't really matter how many, you know, whether there's 20 or 50 rats around. Okay, um, here we are. I'm going to hashtag monster to get out of my shell again, um, which you can do at any time, and then you can't get back into your shell for like three or four hundred turns, I think, something like that. Um, but I don't want to. I want to get the heck, heck out of here. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of rats. Um, and I have not gotten lycanthropy or died yet, so that's a real win. And boom. Okay, we're running away. Bye. Um, that was an experience. Uh, and this is what I mean about turtle being fun. I would never, ever have gotten in a situation like that if I had not been a turtle. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, so yeah, that altar is not super open to me at the moment. I'm going to just keep on exploring, get a few more levels, maybe get my skill up and pickaxe, stuff like that. Um, hope for the best. Um, so back to ranged weapons for a second. We're getting there. 
Um, so uh, dagger is an option. I can get to basic in it. It's not awful, but I won't ever be able to multi-shot in it. Um, I can go with an Aklas, which is always a solid choice, because I can get to basic in club. Um, and I may very well do that. Spear is an option. Um, certainly normal spears are too heavy to bother, but a mithril spear is like nine units of mass, um, which is like as good as a normal dagger. Uh, so carrying around like a half dozen mithril spears is, wouldn't be a problem. Um, and I can get to expert in it, so that's a lot of multi-shot. Um, I, obviously mithril spears are rare, but uh, if I find like 40 mithril arrows or something, which is certainly a possibility, I could forge a good stack of spears, even dwarvish spears. Um, and that would be a decent choice and probably something I'll consider. Um, and then what, what are the other options? Dart, of course, um, and sling. Neither of those I'm really thrilled about. Uh, the, th the selling point of darts is that they're really light, so you can carry massive numbers of them, and with high multi-shot you can like poison them or have darts of um, with a magical property like frost or flame, and you can do a lot of damage per dart with those bonuses, plus enchantment and stuff. Um, but I can't get any multi-shot, so it, I, I don't really think it would be worth that either. Um, like, because even if I was carrying around like 100 darts, I would never be able to use them all in one confrontation, so there wouldn't be a point. Uh, and then sling is just bad. It's it's less bad than in vanilla, because you can get like sling bu bullets and stuff, which do a fair bit of damage, but it's still pretty bad, I think. And speak of the devil, we have ourselves an Aklas. I don't know whether it's cursed or not, and I can't really go to curse uh, to check at the altar, but uh, it's there. Um, and I mean, I'm certain we would have found one in the Gnomish Mines at some point, but uh, nice to have one, nonetheless. Um, so speaking of our pickaxe, I wasn't speaking of it except a fair ways back, but at some point I was speaking of my pickaxe. Um, it's a really solid weapon. Uh, so, pickaxes have undergone a stealth um, upgrade, boost, can't think of the exact word at the moment. Um, but, so in vanilla, about two years ago, they became significantly more accurate than they used to be. Uh, and I'm like 95% sure it was an accident. Uh, but uh, Evil Huck inherited the um, bug. So, um, and in Evil Hack, it's actually noticeable. Like, I mean, not in terms of gameplay necessarily, but, um, like, so if we look up with our object lookup, this is what I mean by it's noticeable, is you can see in the object lookup that a pickaxe has a plus four bonus to hit. Um, if you like looking on the wiki, you may think that a pickaxe has a plus zero bonus hit, because that's what the wiki says. Um, and that was true up until about two years ago. Uh, and then, um, due to some convoluted code shenanigans, um, the pickaxes inadvertently got a plus four bonus to hit. And presumably nobody in vanilla noticed, because how do you calculate to hit? Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't show up in the, um, status bar like uh, like it does an evil hack, which is handy. And it, so if we go to our bullwhip, for instance, we can see our hit to hit actually goes down, which is hilarious. Um, Cause yeah, normally you think, like it used to be like you'd wield the bullwhip whenever you needed to hit something dangerous that you couldn't otherwise hit. And then you wield the pickaxe when you could afford to against weak enemies until you can get your skill up, then eventually you'd be wielding on Matic and just demolishing everything. Now you pretty much always be wanting to, you always want to be wielding your pickaxe unless it's like an acidic weapon, an acidic enemy, or if you're in a shop or something, then you have to use the bullwhip. Um, because it does more damage and it's more accurate. What's not to love? Um, where was I going with this? Well, actually, I guess it doesn't necessarily do more damage against large enemies. 
I think bullwhips might do a little more damage against large weapons, large enemies, but also a good chunk of those are thick skin, so bullwhips do less damage anyway. Regardless, pickaxe is good. Um, and I, in, I have a terrible memory, but I believe that Evil Hack used to give archaeologists enchanted pickaxes, like plus one to plus four maybe. They don't do that anymore. It's always plus zero. I'm not certain why, but it might be because when pickaxes got more accurate, they just started feeling too powerful um, when they were enchanted as well. Um, so in the end, I wouldn't necessarily say that archaeologists have been buffed by this change. Well, they have been for vanilla, but not necessarily an evil hack, assuming I'm correct in my memory about enchanted pickaxes. Um, but certainly pickaxes have gotten more attractive compared to the starting bullwhip. Oh, um, we've got ourselves a mosquito. These are poisonous, so they're scary. Um, there's probably more of them, so I'm going to try to retreat. I don't necessarily want to go across this open room, though, because they could surround me. They're super fast. Even for a normal character, they'd be way faster. But for a turtle, it's even worse. Yeah, speak 20. Um, you can see when I got to level 5, I felt sensitive. Um, Turtles get intrinsic warning at level 5, which is great. I love getting warning. Super useful intrinsic. Um, other than that, turtles also get regeneration at twelve, which is at level 12, which is neat. Um, just like giants. So that's cool. Um, long way off, though. Okay, it seems like there weren't other mosquitoes, maybe? Oh, there's the other one. Okay, it's dead. We're probably good. I'm gonna try to stick near a corridor or other one square wide area if I can. Um, so I can retreat there if things come out to surround me. We've got ourselves another scroll of teleportation. And actually I've been putting all the scrolls and stuff in my bag because, oh I should put on this ring in case it's useful. Oh it is useful, alright. Should have done that earlier then. I'm actually going to keep a scroll out. I was keeping it in my bag because um, that's just my habit um, to protect uh, inventory items from getting damaged by flame or whatever. And another co-aligned altar. This is really our day. Um, but there's not many sources of fire early in the game. Certainly not unavoidable ones like fire traps. Uh, so I'm going to keep the sc scroll teleport out so I can read it quickly in an emergency. Um, anyway, uh, totally forgot what we were talking about. Pickaxes, right. Um, so yeah, the bug is actually, it was funny. So web tools, that is to say tools which can be used as weapons, um, and that uh, category, that category of, um, is uh, populated by unicorn horns, pickaxes, grappling hooks. I believe that's it. Anyway, um, way back in 3.3, uh, NetHack 3.3, um, web tools were added to the game. No, sorry, they weren't added to the game. Um, damage types were added to the game. So, like, um, different weapons can do blunt damage, slashing damage, piercing damage. I'm not sure whether this has much gameplay effect in NetHack proper. Um, in Evil Hack, it does make a pretty significant difference because different weapon materi materials give different bonuses depending on what the damage type of the material is. Um, I'm just kind of looking around for enemies that I can maybe sacrifice. It would be nice to get at least like one point of luck or one nice gift. Um, this is a gray mold. Gray fungus, whatever. Um, oh, I should curse test stuff. Duh. Uh, so I was going to say I couldn't attack the gray fungus because it would make me sick, but I can totally do it from range with an Aklas, so I'm going to do that. Um, anyway, um, so uh, weapon types were added, or damage types were added in 3.3. Um, and they were they represented as most things are in C um, as um, just like a 
All right, Drunk is dead. No corpse, but got some training out of Atlas. Um, they rep they were represented as is, um, most things as just like uh, different integers. So like uh, whack blunt, you know, whack damage was represented with a zero. Um, piercing with a one and slashing with a two. Um, zombies, okay. I guess this level's off limits to me now too. Damn. Actually, I can maybe kill them with my Atlas and then tin them. Yeah, I'm just not good enough with my Atlas yet. Um, I do have warning now, so I can see them, which is great. Um, or like I know they're there, even in dark corridors. Even so, I'm just gonna I'm gonna come back there as soon as I get better with my Atlas. But for now, I'll leave them alone. Um, Rune Dagger is good. I can name Sting, um, which will be helpful against the Goblin King. Also might give me some elves to eat, which I'm a big fan of, because sleep resistance is pretty hard to get, and elves are a good source of it. Um, anyway, so um, web tools at the time, they were um, defined so that the type of damage they did was linked with what their to hit was. So whacking web tools, what is this? Is it a zombie? Should I be scared? Oh, I should be scared, but it's not a zombie. I think it might be asleep. I'm definitely leaving it that way. And that monster is fast, so... It's probably too fast to be anything super strong, because we're still pretty early in the dungeon, but I'm going to avoid it nonetheless. I'm talking about a enemy up here. Um, anyway, so... Um, shit. Leprechaun. Well, I'm going to have to chase that down, I think. Hobbit zombie. Oh, and the jaguar's awake. Not ideal. Definitely not ideal. Uh, speed 15, so they can easily double move me. They can do up to 16 damage. But I certainly can't pray yet either. No, I shouldn't do that. Okay, um. Oh, I did not notice I had a lamp before. That's embarrassing. Totally could have used that, like, to protect against zombies. You know, so I could see them coming before I had warning. Okay, I, the way I see it, I have two options. I can stick myself in my shell, I can keep hitting, or I can always read a scroll teleport. Um. I don't really want to read Teleport because it seems like there's other scary stuff on the level, and I only have so many times I can use that option anyway. I don't really want to sh put myself in my shell either because this zombie will come up to me and then I'll have two problems when I get out of my shell. I think I'm going to risk one more hit. Hopefully it'll bring me down to low enough health that I can pray, or I'll just kill the jaguar. That would be nice too. Better with my pickaxe. Oh, that reminds me, I totally need to make this um, a message type. Um, pardon? Oh, no, I should not save. <laughs> uh, I learned recently that saving um, will make you slower. <laughs> it's really stupid. Um, for some reason, your movement points are, like, not recorded, I guess? I'm not really sure how it works, because it, it's too complicated for me. Um, but it seems like your movement points aren't recorded, so they just give you 12 movement points um, at the beginning, at whenever you resume from a saved game. Um, so you might think 12, that's more than 10. But, uh... Oh. Shit, that's a gnome wizard. That's not good. It could stun me, and then I'd be screwed. But I'm not screwed. It's dead. Rejoice. Um, if it left a corpse... Or no, I'd know if it left a corpse, because I'm searching, so it would show up then. Um, so I do not have to dive into the pit to find out. I'm pretty sure. I generally don't make a habit of searching next to pits, so... Okay, yeah, no corpse. If it had left a corpse, it could have granted telepathy when I ate it, but it didn't, so never mind. Oh, shit. 
that's a zombie. It's an elf zombie, which is great, but I was lucky that I did not get sick or get my brain eaten. Um, where was I? Uh, actually, I should probably add those two to my message types too. Uh, okay, I'm just going to do that real quick before I forget. Um, Anyway, so yeah, so you get 12 movement points, but then you immediately use those to move. So it's kind of like your movement points are reset to zero in a sense. Because normally, like, at a given point in the game, I might have, um, say, five movement points. And then the next turn I get 10, because I'm a turtle and I only get 10 movement points per turn usually, unless I have speed. Um, and so then I'd have 15, and I could move once, and I'd still have three movement points. And then I get 10 again, and I could move once, etc. Um, if you save the game, you get 12 movement points, you use those to move, you only get 10 movement points, so you don't get to move the next turn. So saving is a total, usually, <coughs> no, sorry, always. I believe it's always. Is that correct? Maybe not. Maybe if you have a speed, it's, no, it's not different if you have a speed. Um, Saving as a turtle means that your next move will take two turns, which is means you do not want to save when you're in a dangerous situation. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm just gonna add some stuff here so that I do not try to throw my club when it's not when I don't have it, and so that I stop when I can enhance a skill. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the message. Um, cool. Hopefully that will help. Yep, landing at your feet. All right. Um, but for now, I do not have an Atlas. Uh, I'm trying to only hit it when it's next to me. Okay. Well, we have an elf tin now, which is not nothing. Um, I think I'm going to eat that immediately, because why not? My pickaxe is handy for opening tins, so... Cool. It was rotten, so I'm stunned now. <laughs> Which is not super fun, but... Yeah. Alright. That was... Fun. Oh, killer bees. That's not ideal. And a gray unicorn. Okay. So I do want to kill that, obviously, for the unicorn horn. I do not want it to kill me, though. So I am rather hesitant to engage. And that for some more poison resistance as well. I'm actually going to shut the door. The killer bees seem to be low enough level that warning is not picking them up. Oh yeah, base level one. Oh, that's that's just garbage. Come on. Everyone knows how terrifying killer bees are. They should not be level one. Okay, yeah, that's not happening. Um... Yeah, I don't know. If I get like a potion of sleeping, I suppose I could use that. Okay, this is reminding me where I close the door over there. This dude can paralyze me, but I mean, what can I do? Oh, and now they're coming from the other direction. I assume these are the same pack, so I'm gonna go this way so that if more of them come, they won't surround me. Mm, that might have been all of them. Oh, fuck. Well, and it didn't even have the decency to be a proper poison into death. It just did a heck of a lot of damage, I believe, anyway. Uh, I don't know what I could have... I guess I could have teleported out of there 
as soon as I saw there were killer bees, but like, there'd still be killer bees in my level. Uh, I'm gonna chalk that up to bad luck. Sad, but that's what happens sometimes. Um, guess I could have eaten some of the killer bees. That might have ameliorated the damage a bit. Because I'd have had some poison resistance, but. Oh well. That's a shame. It seemed like an interesting game. Well, I'm gonna go right back into playing more dwarven archaeologists. Er, not dwarven, turtle archaeologists. Um, but that seems like it's it for today. Um, so I'll see you next time. Bye.